Hi, welcome everybody. Um, so um, uh, I am going to do Nikki Desenfal, but I'm also going to try and touch on a, a little bit of Calder. There's there's a show on from the collection at the at the Manhattan Center, um, and the Nikki Desenfal show is is at. MoMA PS1, which is in Queens. Um, there are at least 200 pieces in the show that's at PS1 of Nikki de Saint Fall's work. Um, I come into this knowing nothing about her, obviously, at this stage of the game. I can declare without pride, um, basically what it comes down to is I knew a few of her pieces that I'd seen here and there. Um, the Nanas were what I was familiar with, which are these big, bulbous women. Um, uh, but I knew nothing really about her until I started to dig into this. And she was one remarkable woman. Uh, so... We're going to hop in. So this is a Nana Fountain. Um, don't know where this one is located, actually. I, I had it in my head, but uh, it's, it's gone from me now. Anyway, you get the idea. She was into these big, round, power figures. And um, you, you see that there's... That there's um, um, what looks like tile, well, actually it is. What she did was she would do, create these um, uh, resin-based uh, um, figures and, and then tile around the outside of them. She, um, well, I'll say more about that. She visited uh, Gaudi's uh, Barcelona um, and was to fell totally in love with with what he had done there with the tiling and the organic shapes, the undulating gardens that he created there, um, and she emulated that. Now this is on the left, Nikki herself. Uh, she she lived from 1930 to 2002, um, and she had quite a life, which we're going to dig into now. Um, these are pieces from um, installations that she did throughout Europe uh, and around the world. She um, basically, you know, uh, there's this guardian angel in, in, uh, in you know, one of the uh, train stations in Zurich, um, she got around. Um, <clears throat> and there's this Adam and Eve set over here. Now, that's a theme that she comes back to a number of times. Um, they're, they're very wild. They're very, you know, zany. Um, she was really a self-taught artist, um, although she was a very cultured woman, came from a very um, uh, wealthy family um, and, and was exposed to a lot of European culture and traveled a good deal. Um, but this piece is from the Tarot Garden that she created in Italy. She worked on this for the last 20 years of her life. Some of these structures are big enough to live in. And in fact, while she was working on the construction of this um, with, the, with the laborers, basically they created the structures that she, that she indicated. And then she got in there and did this, the, the mosaic. Um, you know, I'm sure she had assistants working with her, but still in all, this was, this was a major project that she worked on for the last 20 years of her life. Um, 
Now, I'm going to dive in to a talk about her. She really, um, as I said, she was, she was self-trained. Um, um, what we would call now an outsider artist, but she was very much part of the art scene. In fact, let me, let me read you some of this stuff. Um, uh, she was, she was, French American. She was born in France, but grew up in in America. Um, she was really known for her kind of social commitment. Um, she had a difficult and traumatic childhood, um, and a, 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 a rather disrupted education, um, which she wrote about many decades later. After, after an early marriage and two children, she began to create art in a naive experimental style. Um, her first, she first received worldwide attention for angry, kind of violent assemblage uh, performance pieces that she did using, using guns, firearms to create the pieces. They were filmed and, and you know, basically shown around the world. Um, but throughout her career, she, she collaborated with, um, you know, many other well-known artists, Jasper Johns, Rauschenberg, uh, Larry Rivers, John Cage. And, um, and she actually, her second husband was a Swiss kinetic artist called uh, Jean Tinglet. Uh, which I will talk a lot more about later too. Um, and um, basically, she did these insistently exuberant images of these women um, later on in her career that, that's, that spanned through the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s in a period of time when minimalism and, and um, uh, abstract painting was really the, the cutting edge. So she was kind of, you know, um, doing this stuff against, against the tide, but, but, you know, as a French born American raised artist, and one of the most significant female and feminist artists of the 20th century. Um, she was one who received the kind of recognition in the male dominated uh, uh, art world that she deserved. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, she, um, her, her parents uh, and this family portrait on the left gives you some sense of, of the uh, intensity that's there. Uh, this, was, this was painted in 54, 55. Um, and, and let's see, I'm gonna step back and say, she was a very beautiful woman. This Vogue, cover is her. She was, she was um, uh, a fashion model in the late 40s, early 50s, uh, high demand. She, she appeared on the cover of Life, Vogue, and many others, and, and, and was actually made quite a living from, from, from that. She, her first marriage was, she was 18 when she married her first husband, um, his name, Harry, Harry Matthews. Um, they first met as children and then they got together again. They met again in, in somehow or other later in life and, and married. Um, she had two children with him. Their marriage was rather um, uh, unconventional in certain ways. Um, they both had affairs 
Um, uh, she had two children with Harry. Um, but to get back to some of the, the, the history with the family, the, 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 the family was wealthy. They were, they, her, her father was a, an actual count. The family lineage goes back to the Crusades. Um, so she grew up in, in a rather cultured atmosphere. Um, she was born in 1930. The family was in banking. 1930 was, you know, 1929, we had the crash. Uh, uh, the father was the head of the bank and he was away when Nikki was born. Um, uh, they, they lost everything in the crash and it took years for them to work their way back up, which they did. But during that time, Nikki lived with her grandparents who, um, you know, traveled back and forth between Paris and the chateau that they had in the country. And, you know, the, the, the images that, that, that Nikki grew up with, the, the coats of arms and the, the kind of atmosphere that she grew up in was really affected her and, and, you know, got her into this kind of fairy tale language. Um, when she, when she was about um, 11, uh, she was sexually abused by her father. Um, and that was suppressed until much later. Um, she, just, you know, as, as many, many will, she just suppressed the memory of it. Um, her mother was very rigid and, and rather cruel from the description. Um, Nikki had a brother and a sister and um, they both later on in life committed suicide. Um, Nikki at, at, um, around 1950, 52 or 53, had a nervous breakdown, was institutionalized, went into, went into uh, a hospital, um, and basically at that point is when she started to draw. Okay, she started to do these drawings there, and she was obsessed with it and continued to draw and drew her way right out of the, the six week stay that she had in, in, in the sanitarium um, and continued, decided at that point she wanted to be an artist and that's when she started to actually work. Um, you see on the, on the right, a self portrait that she did and you can see um, I mentioned Gaudi earlier. You can see that there that there's a tiled surface on this piece that she did, um, and and in the portrait of her mother and father, there's there's shards of 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 glass and crock shards and things like that embedded in the oil paint. Okay, we're going to move on. And these are some early pieces, you know, I said, you know, she was, she was considered, you know, she would be considered now an outsider artist, but they're really beautiful color and the sensuality, the, the, um, the effect of, of the mixed media that she was using and the oil paint, very beautiful pieces in, in many ways. Um, and she's working through her, her inner turmoil through these pieces. You know, and you see the, the dragons and, and snakes and various other, other, you know, starfish and creatures coming into these pieces. Very fanciful. And in 1960, she started doing these pieces where she was embedding um, 
sharp objects. Now, one of the things I didn't say before was one of the ways that she ended up in that hospital was she was beginning to have suicidal ideation and all that stuff and was gathering sharp objects and hiding them under the bed. Her husband became quite alarmed by this <laughs> with good reason. Um, and so this series where she's embedding these sharp objects, guns and knives and, and um, implements that could be used for destruction, this is really kind of her trying to exercise that, that, that tendency in her. Um, and on the right is, is one of the pieces that she started to do at that period of time where she would actually embed, well, let me move on to the next. She would actually start to embed um, pieces of, of, of objects and, and, and bags of pigment underneath a layer of, of plaster. And then she would take a gun and shoot at, at the, the, the piece. And that would be what would create the painting. Um, these were filmed and uh, let's see, Nikki created her first shooting paintings at public performances throughout the world. These were sens a sensation in the conservative button down early 60s. Um, the paintings were on plywood, a plywood surface. Um, she gave a relief structure um, using plaster and embedding objects and uh, embedding the bags of paint and then shooting them as her painting. Um, this ended around 1963. So from the mid sixties on, she began to work increasingly on um, female um, images. And this one on the, on the uh, upper right is of Marilyn, um, 1964. That was, that was when Marilyn died, um, interesting moment. Okay. And she did this whole series of brides. She got old uh, bridal gowns and, and soaked them in resin and then, and then painted over them and attached objects and things like that to it. Um, it's, it's, it's not exactly the, you know, the, the wedding of your dreams. Or maybe it is, but <laughs> I don't want to be in on that dream. Uh, <laughs> so then came the nanas, okay? And these pieces are real, they're powerful images. They make fun of, of a certain, um, well, nanas, in French was sort of like, you know, Frank Sinatra and the Brat Pack and the Rat Pack, um, uh, uh, chicks. Well, Nanas is the is the French version of chicks at that time. Um, and she took this and and turned them into these really substantial goddess-like forms. And you know, this is in the age of of Twiggy for crying out loud, you know, um, many of these pieces were created in the, in the started to be created in the early sixties and, and through the late sixties. And, you know, Twiggy was the, was the, the, the fashion model of the, of the late sixties. Well, these ain't Twiggy. Um, they're, they're powerful images, buoyant color, bright, you know, when I first saw them, I, I, you know, I thought, well, you know, it's a throwback to the sixties, but there's a lot more to it than that too. Um, now she hooked up with this, with, uh, this guy, uh, Jean Tinglet, um, in, in Paris. Um, she left her husband and her two children 
in 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 Nice and went to Paris to be to be a full time artist. She wanted to make make her living from doing her work, and so um, she moved to Paris with penniless, um, but um, found found her way to um, a kind of garret enclave that was that was in Paris and and uh, Jean Tinglet was was there she met him there and she took a studio in 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 that in that it was kind of a compound of a derelict derelict old castle type building um, and there were a lot of artists that were there um, and she she moved in and they had uh, she and uh, Jean had interactions and and basically ended up marrying. Um, she affected his work and and basically they had a back and forth between one another that was that was um, uh, shall we say that there was there was a certain degree of friction there. But the creative friction was useful, so they 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 fed back and forth between one another. Um, and this is an installation piece which they did together. Um, it was in uh, nineteen sixty six. Um, don't know where the location was. I believe it was in Paris, um, and it was it was a, it was again it was a sensation um, for for 1966. Quite quite the image. <laughs> now you know again, this is the time of kind of sexual liberation. They both had affairs with other people. They, they were very active. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that, that I feel is important is this art as a kind of therapeutic response to a very rough childhood. I mean, you know, from what from what was described, um, her mother was really rigid, and the father was, you know, <laughs> an abuser. So um, that there's there's the buoyance and joy that's in that's in these very unconventional pieces that is something to behold, actually, because you know this lady really worked through her stuff. And this is this is actually a um, a fountain that she and Ting Lei, uh worked on together. Um, uh, he he was definitely you know you see the dark uh, wheelie thing in there. I'm going to show you more of his work later. Um, he was into making these Rube Goldberg kind of contraptions. So, you know, basically he, he helped her with the mechanics of, of some of the stuff that she was trying to do. But th that piece with the wheels and all that, that's his, that's one of his pieces. And again, this is the same fountain at night. And this is, you know, one of the sketches for for the pieces. Um, this is a collaborative, actually, I believe it's a lith lithograph, and she and Ting Lake did it together. So it was this was a collaborative piece also. And throughout she was doing these pieces that that were you know installed throughout the world um you know she basically had had quite the career
And, you know, one of the things that I wanted to bring up is the sources of some of this goddess imagery and, and all of that. And she was well-traveled, went to the museums, saw all of this stuff and, you know, on some level was integrating it and, and, and bringing it to the 20th century. Um, but the power figures were really, you know, something that, that she was, that she was trying to convey. Um, you know, the, the male dominated power structure, you know, the use of the gun and all of that was really, you know, quite shocking. This, this fashion model character shooting at her paintings um, is, is quite an image and quite the, the statement at the time. But the other side of it was to get to the, get to the female power. And this is, um, this is images from the Tarot Garden. And I spoke about that earlier. She spent the last 20 years of her life working on this Tarot Garden. And we're gonna explore this quite a bit more now. Um, this is a big shot, a little blurry, forgive the quality of the shot, I'm gonna move on but you get the idea of the layout and the scale of this and how she could be living inside one of these things while the construction's going on. And I'm gonna go through and do some shots from different angles so you can get just an idea of the scope. You know, there's a fountain, there's water pouring out down those steps into this pool. And then there's one of these Tinglay, um, uh, fountains in the center of this pool. And I talked about Gaudi. I'm going, I'm going to go in a couple of slides to, to some of the uh, images from Barcelona so that you can get how related this work is to that. But these are all characters from the Tarot. If you're at all familiar with that, that this is, you know, it's a, it's a oracle, um, a set of oracle cards. They, they have supposedly, um, you know, the ability to do readings from the, the tarot cards and get certain forces at work in your life and, and all that. And she spent 20 years working on this and working off those, that imagery. And here we are with Gaudi's work. And you can see in this how much that affected her. I don't have a great shot of the gardens, but the, the gardens were, you know, these kind of organic plots throughout this, this, this area. Um, and she went there in the, in the early fifties, just after she had gotten out of the, the uh, treatment and, you know, was recovering and was just so, taken by what he had done and immediately started to integrate that into her work. The, the, the tiling, the broken shards, the brilliant color. And here we are back at the Tarot Garden. Now, she funded this entire thing on sales of her work. She took no grants. She had no outside um, uh, funding sources for it. No grants, no nothing. She didn't want any um, uh, input or um, uh, distraction from what she wanted to do here. This was, this was really 
um, I believe the number that I heard thrown out is it's a it's it's a it's an approximately four million dollar project that she took on over those twenty years. So in the process, she was doing these these commissions, you know, that I showed you earlier with the angels in the in the train stations and installations of 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 the nanas in in various places in various dress. Uh, and, and those were really what she used. She did jewelry, she did, um, uh, pottery, she did all kinds of things. Um, and here's another shot, another angle. Okay, and I, I I read this someplace, and I don't know when this is taking place, but I believe there there are a series of bananas that are coming to Manhattan. Uh, they're they're going to be part of the New York Avenue sculpture project. You see that on Park Avenue, and you see that in various spots throughout the city. Um, so. Keep an eye out. They're 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 coming. Uh, if they're not here already, I don't know. I I haven't been driving around New York too much lately. You know these dancing, buoyant figures are really remarkable. Just you know. It's so much fun. Okay. Now, <laughs> we're moving on. We're moving on to Calder. Um, I, I, I just, I just want to say, you know, that this um, show that's on in, at PS1, I think would be well worth the trip over there. I, I wanted to go this week, but there were things that came up that I couldn't get there. But I will be going. I definitely want to see this work in person. Um, and also, when you're over there, in fact, um, I don't know where PS1 is in relationship to um, um, well, basically, it's 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 not too far into Queens, so it's not it's not real far off. Um, and the Noguchi Museum is also over there. So, you know, that would be quite, you know, the duo. I mean, they're both in Long Island City. So um, I, I think that would be worth a trip. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to Calder. Now, Ting Lake was definitely affected by Calder and he in turn affected Nikki de saint -Fal. So there is a relationship between Calder and, and these artists. Um, Calder really created um, a, a new form of art, basically. The, the stables that, that he did, these big pieces, this, is a, this piece from 74 is, I believe, I think I might've taken that shot, but I'm not 100% certain anymore. Um, but I believe this is this is one of the ones from from uh, across the river. Um, so uh, Storm King has a number of his stables there. Um, but the inventiveness that Calder brings to his work was something that I think Tingle was affected by, um, and. The mobiles basically are an invention of Calder. These these had not been done before. They they um, they were really inventing a a medium which didn't exist before he made it. Um, and 
his color sense and the buoyance and joyfulness and spatial sensibility. I mean, this is another guy who did, did, did everything. He painted, he sculpted, he created these engineering feats. Um, if you, if you've been to the Whitney and saw and have seen the circus, the, the circus is really a wonderful piece that he made out of these wire characters. And, and um, there's actually a wonderful film of him playing that, playing with the circus and making it run. Um, so the, the show that's at the, at the Museum of Modern Art is drawn mainly from their collection, but it really does um, go through his entire career and, and gives you a sense of, I mean, he made knives and forks, he made jewelry, he did, he did, he did such inventive stuff. He was constantly tinkering and, and you know, this guy deserves uh, the focus of a whole hour not going to get it right now, but, you know, basically um, the show that's on in at, at MoMA on 53rd um, is definitely worth a visit to. Um, and I, I'm definitely going to try and get there. Uh, again, this is this is another shot from from Storm King, uh, the Five Swords. And Big Red, this is a, you know, it looks really petite, but the thing is enormous. It's, it's actually nine, nine feet, six inches. Um, this one, this Big Red is in the Whitney collection. Um, so it, it, um, it won't be, it won't be in the show in Manhattan, but there are a number of, of the the um, Calder mobiles that are in the the MoMA show, and here's the man himself uh, in 1962 checking out, <laughs> tinkering with his mobiles uh, as as uh, he was doing a big show at the Tate in London. Okay, so um, Nikki de Saint Fall, uh, the story of a free woman, is a YouTube that is really spectacular. Um, one of the problems with showing you these pieces in still shots is you don't get to see what they're like when they're in action and a lot of them are fountains and a lot of them, you know, the dimensionality, the sense of walking through them and the sense of being in them is something that's important. Now, you know, Nikki died young. I mean, she died at 72, which well, it's not that young, but it's, it, it, it's fairly young. And, and basically she, she exposed herself to a lot of toxins in making those things that she made. But the beauty of the work and the power of it is, is just something that, that I think would be um, worth watching the, the 55 minutes of the, the story. And you'll get more of a sense of how powerful she was. I mean, she was, she was an AIDS advocate before that was something that people did. Uh, she, was, she was really... Uh, a cutting edge person all the way through her life. Courageous. Um, okay, and the Calder Sculpture of Air is really a great movie. Wonderful flick. If you want more Calder, definitely tune into that. Um, and go to, uh, you know, the um, museum and, and go for a visit. So, um, were there any questions that came up, Joan? Actually, no, there weren't any questions. Okay. Was, oh, wait. Somebody raised their hand. Please yeah. type it into the chat function, and then we'll be able to read it. But um, 
I should have mentioned this in the beginning. Yeah, I, I please, forgot to do it too. Yeah, just please, uh, if you're interested and you have a question, please put it in the chat function. So we'll wait a second. Um, yeah. As you know, I'm ready to uh, have one of the nanas. I love them. <laughs> so they're around. <laughs> well, I'm sure they are. <laughs> so um, we'll see how this all works out. Right. Okay. Well, she hasn't done it, so we'll just okay. uh, save it for next time. All right. So thank you all for coming. And I just a note: if you would please, if come go to the Chappaqua Library website, which is chappaqualibrary.org, and um, you can see all the programs we're going to be having for the next month. And Larry, do you want to talk at all about next week's program? Sure. Ne next week, I I had down um, uh, Soutine de Kooning, um, which is a show that's happening down in, in Philadelphia at the Barnes. Um, I've been going through some heavy duty people the last couple of weeks between between Alice Neal and and uh, and Nikki um, I, I'm, I'm thinking I might want to do uh, Turner next week there's a show that's coming to the Boston Museum so I may want to focus on that I'm going to talk with the, the folks at the library and see how difficult a thing that would be to uh, shift things. I was thinking that doing Turner next week might be might be a break from the 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 heavy going, but um, but I'll you know we'll see. I think I think you guys have been have been troopers to stick oh. with this. And <laughs> wait a minute, Larry. It's oh, you got a question? Just emailed me and said the chat function isn't working. Uh oh, that this happened the last time too. That's right. That's right. Why? What's going on with that? I don't know. Okay. Let's say um, I don't know. I right. I'll, I'll ask Carrie. Okay. Yeah, that's um, important. Thank you. Uh, maybe we could get them to in the. Hold on. Why get into participants? It says. I can't open this. Mm -hmm. It says it's been disabled. Yeah. How that happened? See. I have no idea. Let me okay. see if I could somehow straighten it out. I don't see how, but I'm sure I'm sure you'll be able to. We'll be able to straighten it out. There's. there's well, we'll got, speak to. If it was Karen. done, there's a way to get it undone. <laughs> You're right, but I don't know how to do it. Few yeah. options. Okay. Does anyone know? Same message last week. All right. You know what? I'll just, um, I don't know how to do this. Okay. We could allow people to talk if you're interested. Yeah, that's fine. So I don't know how I do that either. If anyone is interested in talking, I could click on them. Okay. I'm going to allow her to talk. Okay. Her name is Nancy. Nancy, can you talk you have to unmute yeah do you okay. hear me now yes, yes you do okay great i love i love that then the, the lecture on nikki but i want to know where do, where is that garden that you mentioned that all her uh, work is at it's in it's in italy um yeah, what part of italy i'm planning well, on going the, there the, the actually the um, if you if you go to uh, her website or go to the um, the uh, PS1 website uh, MoMA PS1 that information will be there. And is um, she exhibiting? Is her she, works on exhibit at PS1? What are her works? on exhibit at PS1. Yes. Right now. Yes. Okay. That, Do you know the, how long? Yeah, that, they're on until September 7th. Oh, and, wonderful. I really and would love there's to over see 200 that. pieces in the show. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe going there and going to the Brooklyn Museum or the Botanical Gardens is also a nice option. Well, there's okay, also, thank you very much. There's also Noguchi. 
I, I've been there. I've been there. Okay. Okay. And now and let's, there's also well, some other question. I'm just going to go. Thank you, Nancy. There's another question. Okay. I don't know. Can you, uh, Lori, can you unmute, please? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Larry. Thank you so much for these uh, programs. I really oh, love them. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I, I had, a, I, I just had, a, you know, like I was watching with the uh, shards and things that, that Nikki had in her artwork. And I remember when they, when Julian Schnabel came on board, they were making such a fuss of it, over him putting all those plates and things. Yes. In his artwork. And it seems that he stole from her and they were hailing him as being the first person to do that. And I was very surprised to see this and kind of refreshing. Yes. You know, this, this lady was huge for a period of time and I had no idea. I mean, you know, yes, you're right. Julian Schnabel, take a back seat, man. Yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> This lady's at the wheel. <laughs> yes, yes. It's nice to see a woman doing it first. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So thank you for your question. Okay. There's no other question. Thank you, Lori. There's no other questions. Okay. So uh, thank you all for coming. And we'll uh, see you again next week at 2 o'clock. Great. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.